In recent decades, maritime transport of chemical substances has considerably increased. It is estimated that approximately 2,000 different chemical substances are transported by sea. These substances can be transported in bulk or packaged and transported in containers. There are different types of boats that can transport HNS. Bulk carriers that transport liquid and solid substances in bulk. They are used for the transport of vegetable oils, cereals, metal shavings, minerals and others. The vessels that transport gases are called gas tankers and are designed to transport liquefied gases, gases in gaseous state, pressurised or refrigerated. Chemical tankers are specialised in the transportation of some of the most dangerous liquid chemicals. Finally, there are container ships that transport chemical substances contained in bottles, barrels or other similar containers inside large metal containers. Due to its dangers, when faced with an accident involving chemical substances, there are important considerations that must be taken into account when addressing the response tasks. The first actions are focused on the protection of personnel on board, protection of response teams and protection of the population in the affected area, through rescue, evacuation or confinement. The following steps are to cut the possible sources of ignition, stop the spill and establish the exclusion zones. Next, the specialised response teams will focus their efforts on combating the situation and mitigating its consequences. To do so, they must first identify the substance or substances present using the information in the shipping document or the labels of the containers. Knowing their physico-chemical characteristics and present and future meteorological ocean conditions, they will be able to estimate the toxicity of the spill, its behaviour in the environment and its dispersion. The protection and response equipment will be chosen based on this information. Depending on the behaviour of the poured substance, there are different protocols for action. Nevertheless, in all cases, in parallel to that response, a continuous monitoring of the evolution of the discharge must be made. When the spilled substance evaporates, a toxic cloud can be generated and it has to be monitored by special devices and forecast its dispersion. In those cases, if possible, the response team must stop the release of the gas and slow the dispersion of the toxic cloud or even abate it or recondense it. When we face a substance that floats, we can follow its dispersion by using drifting buoys that will continuously give us their position. If the substance also evaporates, foams can be used to cover it to minimise vaporising into the atmosphere and risk of fire and explosion. Therefore, it can be confined by booms before being picked up by recovery equipment, such as skimmers. If the spill refers to packaged substances that float, as it is in the case of drums, the best option is to recover them at sea and encapsulate them in a suitable container. When substances have a higher density than seawater and sink, equipment specially designed for underwater activities is necessary, such as underwater NRBQ protection suits, echo sounders or underwater devices such as remote operated vehicles. Chemicals that dissolve are complicated to deal with, therefore intervention actions are limited. An exception occurs when the spill is dissolved in very confined waters, in which the use of neutralising agents could be possible. In the rest of the cases, the response will focus on monitoring the water quality and its evolution. Decontamination of people and equipment is not less important. Appropriate equipment is essential to reduce the spread of contaminant to clean areas. Therefore, any response protocol must set up a decontamination area according to the level and type of decontamination required.
Planning and responding to chemical incidents cannot be generalized and should always be adapted to the specificity of the incident. This requires to take into account not only the characteristics of the substances, but also the possible interactions between them and the marine environment. In some cases that imply a big risk for responders, or when the resources to face the incident is scarce, the option not act and keep monitoring becomes the best response.